this paper is about the releases of genetically modified mosquitoes and other insects into the environment. We wanted people to be aware that since more than 10 years ago, there have been open releases of these GM or genetically modified mosquitoes, and uh, they have basically been a failure. The Oxitec, which is based in the UK but owned by an American company in Trexon, have been doing experimental releases of millions of GM mosquitoes, releasing large numbers of female GM mosquitoes inadvertently, which can bite and transmit disease. Other risks uh, uh, include not properly accounting for the fact that there are multiple species that transmit diseases. So if you only uh, tackle one, you can create worse problems with another. <laughs> So uh, they released large numbers of genetically modified mosquitoes to mate with the wild mosquitoes and then the offspring of those matings were supposed to die at the larval stage and the idea was to suppress the numbers of the wild mosquito. Uh, they've claimed uh, great success in suppressing wild mosquito populations but in fact uh, recent information from the Cayman Islands has shown all those claims have been misleading and it's diverted resources away from better ways of tackling tropical diseases. Uh, the intention is to release only male mosquitoes because they don't bite, but in practice, uh, with Oxitex technology, the sorting process was actually very poor and large numbers of GM female mosquitoes were released, which can bite and transmit disease, meaning that it's, it's not a safe technology in that sense. Um, there are also concerns about the survival of future generations of GM mosquitoes. They're supposed to die off, but in fact, that's also not perfect. There are multiple species which transmit these diseases. So if you suppress, if you do successfully suppress one species, and other species can move in and actually potentially become more difficult to eradicate. Proper risk assessments were never really done. And certainly risk assessments that met European standards, which was the legal requirement for the export of these GM mosquitoes, were never published and consulted on. In addition, we don't even really know whether reducing the population is actually going to reduce the transmission of disease. So there were many uncertainties which were kind of brushed under the carpet. Uh, well, Oxitec has actually stopped all its open releases of the technology which we talk about in the report of these GM mosquitoes which are genetically programmed to die at the larval stage. But it has started some new experiments in Brazil with what it calls its second generation technology. It's just a new untried untested version, so we're really back to square one. Target Malaria's proposing releases, releasing uh, genetically modified mosquitoes to tackle malaria rather than dengue, which is the disease that Oxitec was looking at. And it is a different technology, but there are some very important lessons from this report. The risks of releasing genetically modified organisms and also about misleading claims of benefits uh, so we're questioning really whether all the necessary standards and processes are in place in Africa to deal with this new proposed release. This is an international issue and it will become more of an international issue if uh, target malaria moves to the future generation of GM mosquitoes which use something called gene drive which are intended to replicate and spread in the environment. Eggs can be transported all around the world so releases don't just affect one country they can potentially affect others. Um, we have an international regime the Cartagena protocol on biosafety which is intended to uh, require risk assessments for these kind of releases and with target malaria we're also seeing that um, this research consortium is saying that they don't need to do this kind of risk assessment. They're arguing that uh, because the mosquitoes are being bred in Africa after they've exported them, 
then that means they're exempt from this requirement. And we think that's very worrying. Well, it's clearly very important that uh, members of the public give their fully informed consent to releases of any genetically modified organism into the environment, especially where it's intended to have an effect on their health. And you need to have uh, people fully engaged on the ground so that, for example, women are consulted, not just men, um, and that you have a process that's not just being run by the company or organisation which wants to promote the releases.